Hi guys, it's Loretta with Sparrowhawker Designs. So, I have been asked to show how to get started on a slow stitch project. And, I'm sorry, my chair is very loud. <laughs> um, so, if you don't know what a slow stitch project is, or if you've kind of been looking but not really sure what it's all about, um, it's basically embroidery, uh, but it's um, it's it's different at the same time. So this is I'm making a wall hanging. This is my first block in my wall hanging. Um, I have videos up on all the blocks that I finished, so you can go look at those if you if you want to. Um, and uh, this is the second block, and here's the third one. And I'm gonna do either four or six. I haven't decided which. Um, but it's slow stitching is based off of the Japanese um, sashiko, I think it is, which is um, visible mending. Yeah, it's sash sashiko, uh, otherwise known as visible mending. And it's when, like, with visible mending, it's when you you make your mistakes beautiful. <laughs> um, this has been around for a long time, although um, not necessarily. It, quite like this I have been watching um, or I've been collecting images of what is slow stitching I didn't realize that's what it was I just thought it was a form of primitive art um, you know like um, primitives when you leave your raw edges you know when things are not perfect um, and uh, if you've been watching my channel, you probably know that I do crazy quilting. And in crazy quilting, the emphasis is on perfect stitches. And although I am not perfect, and I don't actually aim to be perfect, but I do try to um, at least at least make my stitches even whenever I'm doing crazy quilting. Um, so crazy quilting is all about your beautiful master of the needle. You know, your your it was came about in Victorian times for women to show off their um, their needle art abilities. Slow stitching is completely the opposite. <laughs> it's it's very uh, your stitches do not have to be even. They don't have to be in a straight line. I mean they can be, but they don't have to be. Um, and you can just throw everything in the kitchen sink on here and which I kind of do in crazy quilting too, but different stuff. Like in 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 uh, the slow stitching, I don't care if things are stained, you know? Um, like this is stained up. That would not probably work out as well for a crazy quilt as it does on slow stitching. So it's like I don't care if things are stained. I don't care if things are ripped or torn. Um, and you don't care about your raw edges. So... Um, without further ado, uh, you need a, a base to sew your fabric onto. In crazy quilting, we don't use batting. We usually just use a piece of muslin. Um, with slow stitching, uh, you can also use muslin. Um, kind of the trend right now, though, is to use batting. And then you would either um, then later put a backing fabric on it and hang it as wall hanging or if you were going to make a book um, you of course you would have a cover but then this would be like page one and page two so see so you're um, well yeah so you'd have a cover and then this would be page one so you would glue these together or uh, even I guess even sew them together if you if you wanted um, or a lot of people are making snippet rolls uh, with the slow stitching so the batting is good for that and you add a backing to it but you can just as easily just do it on muslin if you wanted to you could use um, 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 well yeah <laughs> you could use anything really wool or felt or uh, anything like that so anyway um, so how how I do this for this particular project I'm wanting to use up some of my uh, the feed sack from my grandmother's 
um, collection of feed sack. So I am trying to use the same fabrics throughout on every block, not, not just those fabrics, but you know. And so this is one of my grandmother's pieces this came from her feed sack collection. It's it's pretty threadbare, so I can't really use it for any other project. That's just it. I mean, um, when they get so threadbare because they're so old, you don't really want to use them in a regular quilt because um, they wouldn't hold up. So what I do is I just, I, I figure, okay, I want these fabrics in here, so um, I just start kind of deciding, like, where I want it. Um... Other things that I'm going to put in are uh, just little sentimental tidbits, little things that you wouldn't really have a whole to use in a whole project and you're not really sure what to do with them. This is a piece that I stamped and painted. Um, this is also a piece that I hand stamped. And, you know, there's a discoloration here. I don't care. <laughs> it's not, that's what this is all about. Plus, I'll probably end up covering it with stitching, so it won't really matter. Um, and then, and so far as your pieces, because I'm trying to highlight these, I kind of have big pieces, um, but it's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever made, like, Franken paper, um, uh, where you just use little squares. You could do that with this too. You could use little tiny squares. You could do nothing but strips if you wanted. You could do nothing but circles. Um, I'm kind of using bigger pieces because I'm wanting to kind of highlight these uh, fabrics that were my grandmother's. So this is the edge, the edging on a um, linen hanky. So I just think that... Um, I just think that that edge is really pretty. Uh, not on this block, but in uh, in the past, I have used. Um, let's see, I've used the little uh, things on your the salvage edge of your fabric. It tells you who your manufacturer is and what colors are being used. Um, so I I've, I've even used that kind of stuff. And it's actually perfect for your pieces that might be quote unquote stained, you know. Um, so, anyway, we'll get this on here. And, um, yeah, I don't care about, um, I don't even care if it's crooked, <laughs> you know. It's kind of freeing because I. I was a traditional quilter for years and all your points have to meet and everything has to be perfect. Um, and then in crazy quilting, everything doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, you're, it, 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 the emphasis is on having perfect stitches and um, having um, balance on your block and your colors matching. And with this, it's just, you don't have to. <laughs> you can do anything you want. So I have another one of these hearts, and this this heart really is just totally threadbare. I can almost count the threads on it. It's so thin. Um, this um, came with this heart, and then they were they were given to me by a crazy quilter who was a friend of my mother-in-law's also, and she has since passed away. Um, so. And I, I'm kind of, I know I'm, I'm putting her, her things on here with my grandmother's stuff and my mom's stuff because, uh, she really was very influential in my crazy quilt journey. Like she was sort of the one that said, come on, do this, come on, join us. And I went to like a retreat and she was just wonderful. And then several years of friendship ensued and then she passed away. So anyway, so basically that's that's it that's what you start with and now I won't and I'm probably gonna put um, something under here and that's the other thing if it overlaps it's okay <laughs> so I'm probably gonna put something like that under here maybe something on on this side I'm probably gonna use some hexes on this one since I've used fans on the last two um, I'll use some yo-yos I'm gonna use some 
trim, um, maybe an old doily, that type of thing. Uh, but for but for right now, you just kind of want to get your basic layout of this. And then what I do is um, I probably should have had my needle threaded before now, but I um, I just baste it down with a big stitch. And when I'm done basting it, then I start. Um, then, then I will probably go and put on the bigger pieces like this because things are kind of going to go around this. So anything I want under this heart, like this, I might put some um, some cheesecloth over here maybe on this side. So anything I want under the heart, you know, I I will make sure you sew them in order. <laughs> So, but for this, I'm just, for right now, I'm just uh, going to baste them in place. And then you just cut your basting stitches as you go. You know, as you, as you secure that piece down with um, decorative stitching or with whatever you're going to layer on top of it, uh, then you can just cut your little basting stitches as you go. And, um, folks, that's really all there is to it. And then when you're done decorating it and you get everything together, then you, you know, sew your book together or your blocks together or your snippet roll together or whatever. Um, and yeah, so just like that, that, that kind of a running huge stitches basting stitch because really all you're doing is just making sure that your fabric's not going to move on you. So I hope everybody's having a good day. It's a holiday weekend here in the U.S. Um, kind of the, it kind of uh, signals the end of summer, <laughs> you know. Um, and you can, you can put a knot in your basting stitch if you want but honestly I mean unless you're pulling and tugging on this thing you really don't even need to do that so there you go there's there's that and now I will go and run a basting stitch down this side and this side and probably here in the middle just to make sure these two don't move and so then I will start then I will um, add whatever I'm going to do with this whatever layers I need to add to that and then I'll start stitching um, I usually try to do the stitching before I add anything else because you can always lay stuff over top of the stitching, but sometimes it's difficult to stitch around the stuff. So, um, so like with this one, I did the same thing. I, I basted it all down and then I did the heart. That was the first thing I did. And then I started just doing my, this is called a boro stitch. I just started doing my boro stitch. Um, and then... I added like this and this. I tried to get the stuff around the heart first and then just kind of worked my way out, I guess is what you would say. Um, this one, <clears throat> the focal point on this one was this really old piece of uh, embroidery that was in my mom's sewing basket. She had a sewing basket from her great aunt that just had a ton of odds and ends in it. So that was sort of the focal point there. And I went in and I did the beadwork around these leaves before I did anything else. And then I just, then I started, then I think I added the hexes and then I added the heart. And um, same thing here. I think I put down this piece of sari silk, but then I added the fabric, then I added the beads. So you just kind of layer it. Um, and on this one, I think this one dealt me a lot of trouble because it didn't really have like a focal point before I added this big ruffle it was just this big piece of fabric and then I had the heart but I didn't have anything that was sort of like the thing that drew you and, and so that's why I think I think this one kind of I struggled with this one a little bit um, so I actually added this ruffle last so I think the first thing I did with this was I put this down and then the fan, and then this, and then that. And so, you know, and you can kind of tell too, like what came after because this is on top, you know, this is laying on top. So 
Anyway, and you can put anything you want on here. Um, the sort of um, primitive uh, sashiko kind of thing doesn't really call for elaborate stuff like beads. Um, but it's yours and you can do whatever you want with it. And, and so it, I, I find it difficult not to add beads to everything. So um, anyway, so that is it. That is all there is to it. And then uh, you just, there. I literally you cannot mess it up. I mean, you, you can make something necessarily that you don't care for, but you cannot mess this up. <laughs> so I hope you guys give it a try and I hope... Um, for the people who had requested a video on how to get started, I hope this was efficient um, or sufficient. <laughs> and that's it. So I hope you make something you love and have a great day. Bye-bye.